I think it's safe to say the video game industry finds itself in a precarious place in 2024. A number of flops have happened, like Concord, or games that aren't doing as well and have a ton of bugs and other issues, such as Star Wars Outlaws, or just industry layoffs happening everywhere. Heck, the Visions of Mana uh, came out in Japan and didn't sell that well but beyond that visions of mana's developer was closed before the game even came out this is becoming a problem in the industry that has made some people go out there and say that we are in the midst or the beginning of a video game crash and that is not actually something i agree with but i do think that the video game industry is shifting and I was reminded of this uh, by an interview done by Jason Schreier having to deal with Astrobot, and it actually made me think directly of Nintendo because it turns out Nintendo's just been doing something this whole time. They bet on a certain way to make games, a certain way to run their company that is paying off massively now as all the other studios that decided to go and chase and go in a, a completely different direction seem to be struggling. And I shouldn't say every studio is. There are some. The Call of Duty studios are doing just fine. Obviously, Rockstar is doing just fine, et cetera, et cetera. But there are a number of studios that simply aren't and we're seeing it with all the layoffs we're seeing it with the games you know just not doing well or just completely failing and tanking so i want to get to this in a moment i want to remind you we're on our road to 150 thousand subscribers so i'd appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel uh, drop a like on this video as well if you feel like it but let's go ahead and look at this tweet by jason schreier he said the secrets behind astrobot's success include a small team a reasonable scope and people who have worked together for years it's a model for the video game industry for this week's column i spoke to the director of 2024's best reviewed game and it's true it's sitting at a 94 on metacritic right now what i i find interesting about this though is the wording here you know, the secrets behind Astrobot's success include a small team, a reasonable scope, and people have worked together for years. It's a model for the video game industry. I find it fascinating that Astrobot is being called a model for the video game industry because everything Jason Schreier just said is Nintendo. They have reasonable budgets, long-term staff, hardly any layovers, reasonable goals, and they just keep delivering quality games. Two of the highest, you know, reviewed games of the entire generation are Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. They came out in the same year back in 2017. Both had reasonable budgets, long-term teams, reasonable scope, and they both delivered. Kirby in the Forgotten Land, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, we can just go on and on and on, game after game, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3, Definitive Edition. We can just keep on with Splatoon 2, Splatoon 3, Ring Fit Adventure. It just goes on and on and on that the secrets to Nintendo's success over the years is going in the opposite direction of the rest of the industry. So I do find it fascinating when we see things like this out here when finally another company does the same thing. They finally, Team Asobi, a team working for Sony, making Astrobot, you know, has a small team, a reasonable scope, and people have worked together for years, how it's a model for the video game industry, as if that model didn't exist before. And we're not putting words in Jason Schreier's mouth because he's not discrediting Nintendo and he's not saying this model didn't exist before. But what he's saying is a lot of people have been ignoring the way Nintendo does things but now that Astrobot on a completely different platform is seeing Nintendo levels of success, at least in the reviews, we'll see with the sales, that we have a new direction for the industry. And that to me is actually a little bit exciting because I've been saying for a long time that I didn't understand what these studios were doing, chasing. They're chasing the Fortnites. They're chasing this. They're chasing Minecraft. They're chasing GTA. But all of those franchises, all of those games didn't start out with $200 million budgets. They started out with a small team that had worked together for a while, reasonable budget, reasonable expectations, and the games went ahead and exceeded those expectations. Fortnite massively you know, exceeded the original expectations of the original project, right? Minecraft massively exceeded the original expectations of its creator, Notch. These games didn't get there. GTA, back in the day, they didn't know that it was going to be this massive behemoth 
billion dollar, you know, several billion dollar uh, franchise today. They had no idea. See, here's the thing. The video game industry gets stuck trying to chase people, trying to chase trends that didn't get there by spending $200 million on a game. They didn't get there by inflating budgets and all these temporary contract hires. No, they got there by valuing their teams, having a smaller team that worked together for many, many years, and reasonable budgets and a reasonable approach. Now, I'm really, really happy for Astrobot. You guys have seen some footage uh, throughout this video because this game is wonderful. It's an absolutely wonderful experience. And I, I, I think that, you know, Nintendo fans, even if you don't, aren't into all the, like the nostalgia factor because they put a lot of nostalgia in Astrobot. I think Nintendo fans will just enjoy it as a game. It is a good video game. You can eliminate the nostalgia from the game and it's still an amazing experience. The nostalgia just adds to it for people that, you know, feel certain ways about certain IPs. But even when we set all that aside, what I really care about is the future of the video game industry. Uh, it's no secret we talk about Nintendo Switch 2 a lot on this channel. And look, it is one of the most exciting things happening for me uh, coming up. It is, you know, my hopefully ticket to the big time, right? Like, well, let's be honest about the channel. It, it was not too long ago uh, that I posted, you know, that video talking about us Nintendo content creators struggling. And a huge part of that was, well, we're kind of just in limbo waiting for the next system. Yeah, Echoes of Wisdom is hype. So is Jamboree. Hell, so is Mario and Luigi Brothership. These are all hype games, but they're not, you know, moving the needle with views. The interest level in these projects just isn't as high as the heyday of Nintendo Switch, which is, you know, expected. We're in year eight of the platform, and Nintendo on top has told us the successor is coming. It's no longer rumors and speculation and a guess. No, Nintendo said it exists. The, the Switch successor exists, and there's going to be news on it this fiscal year. So I sit back and I look at, well, it's awesome and amazing to get this new platform out there. PlayStation 5 Pro, we're just about to get that announced and come out this holiday. And we're on the cusp of new hardware launches, a new iPhone's coming. There'll be new Samsung and other Android devices coming as well. My thing is, what matters is the games themselves, regardless of the platform you're on. And I hope that Nintendo, in com combination with Team Asobi and the other companies out there that run in this way, are setting the examples. Reasonable budgets, long-term team members, big success. That's, that's what needs to happen. And I don't know where companies ever thought that working in this way where you're temporarily hiring hundreds of people and you're inflating budgets like crazy, how that was going to end up being some super profitable thing where you could just spend your way to success sure maybe that was working back during the xbox 360 and the playstation 3 era when hd video games felt like such a fresh new thing for so many consumers never mind that we've had it on pc for way longer than those generations existed but for so many consumers it felt like this fresh new thing and there was all this heavy investment trying to figure out like how to push visuals to the extreme because if you had one of the best looking games it would end up selling really really well you'd get rewarded with sales but now here we stand in 2024 and you know what the best selling games aren't the ones pushing the visuals to the extreme the best selling games are the ones that are just good video games and that is what nintendo bet on decades ago when they decided to go with the Nintendo Wii and you know go blue ocean and get away from the power chase, they made a decision that, you know what, we need to value gameplay over power. And yes, you can get better and superior gameplay from more power, but that's not the only way. Nintendo proved that with the motion controls and the unique concepts and games that came out because of it. And now how motion controls are normalized in things like VR, that really goes all the way back to Nintendo normalizing motion controls in the first place. VR has Nintendo to help thank for normalizing that. Uh, so uh, it's fascinating when you think how Nintendo's been betting on themselves over and over and over again going, Hey, even when we're you know not doing as well during the 3DS and Wii U era, in fact, losing money for a couple of years, no, 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 we're not going to fire people. We're not going to cut salaries. We're going to keep our teams together because that faith, that investment is going to pay off, and it absolutely did on Nintendo Switch. So I'm really happy for Sony, and I'm really happy for Team Asobi. 
I'm really happy uh, with what they got going on. And I, you know, always counter that the industry is about to crash or everything is so bad. And I counter that with, no, the industry is not about to crash. The industry is just shifting. Gamers are shifting. Our preferences are changing. There was a day that you could just have the most beautiful looking, most realistic game, release it, and that's what got us excited. But now, people are kind of feeling it. You know, it's PlayStation 5 generation. It's Xbox Series generation. It's high MPC. And guess what? We're not feeling the massive visual jumps that we felt in prior generations. You could tell me about the ray tracing. You could tell me about the lighting. You could tell me about the pixel counts. You can tell me about the beard hairs on a character in Spider-Man 2. And I'm going to sit there and go, yeah, but if I look at some of the best looking games from PlayStation 4, it's not that big of a difference. You know, diminishing returns a little bit. Maybe the visual aspect just isn't what matters now. We, we've reached that point where the visuals are good enough. So now what? Well, now what's gameplay? Now what's world building, character building, storytelling? There are a lot of ways to do it without spending 100, 200, 300 million dollars, 500, a billion dollars on a game. And you might go, a billion? Who's doing that? Probably GTA. Let's be fair. Grand Theft Auto is the one franchise that could probably justify it. They could justify spending a billion. I'm sure if they ever made a Fortnite 2, yeah, Epic Games could justify spending a billion on development as well. There are a few franchises that can maybe justify crazy out there budgets. That's because the sales potential for their games is so high. GTA 6 could go on to sell 200 million copies. So, like, yeah, there's there's obviously a reason to um, invest heavily in that kind of stuff. There's a reason that Zelda has become quickly Nintendo's one of Nintendo's highest budget games. Because, look, the last two Zeldas sold over 20 million. One sold over 30. Like, do you guys understand that that's, like, you combine the sales of Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild together, and that's almost half the sales of the entire franchise? Remember, this is a series with, like, 18, 19 games. But two games, the two this generation, make up about half the sales. Yeah, Zelda's pretty big. They could put a bigger, uh, a, a bigger amount of money into it. They could put bigger investments in the 3D Mario games than side-scrolling Mario games. In the end, Nintendo is in a situation where they've been trying to tell the industry how wrong you guys are forever. And nobody wanted to listen. Nintendo would just be dismissed. You have that weak hardware system. You have, well, uh, you know, hey, you're making you're making double A games and selling them for triple A prices. What's wrong with you, Nintendo? We can't get away from that. We can't. You know, there's no way we can make a double A game and sell it for triple A prices. Why not? Why can't you? Why can't you? Why can't you spend 20 million on a game and sell it for 60, 70 bucks? Why not? Is it because you're afraid that because it maybe might not be the most visually intensive game ever, gamers won't think it's worth the money? But what what are the games that stick around? It ain't about the visuals. It's about the gameplay. If you give us the gameplay, and the gameplay is inventive, and it's fun, and it's immersive, that's going to keep us engaged. That's going to create positive reception and positive talk. And people might, might, might be shocked if you drop a new game. That is like, you know, say Sony's version of Kirby or something for a side scrolling Kirby and say Sony tries to charge 70 bucks. Yeah, fans might scoff, but there will be some that play it. And then the word of mouth gets out that the game's fun, that the game has charm, that the game is practically flawless. And that's going to lead to positive word of mouth, which leads to sales, which leads to normalizing being able to sell double-A games at triple-A prices the way Nintendo has. And I even hate the term double-A. What does that even mean? Money spent? Is that, is, that, is that what we're talking about now? Money spent? That's what makes a game good? I'll tell you right now, Kirby in the Forgotten Land with probably a budget of $20 million or less? Well, ask Concord. Would Sony like the $100 mil plus it spent on that game back and instead make a, make a $20 million Kirby game? I think the industry is shifting and the industry is about to go through a very harsh change period. It's not crashing. It's changing. 
games like Astrobot are just reminding everyone how much the industry needs to change. And yes, Team Asobi is probably a leader or seen as a leader among developers right now just because it's the most recent hot big thing. I get it. But let's not lose sight of the fact that Nintendo has been doing it this entire time. So, I just kind of want to leave this with a few final thoughts. Obviously, we're hoping here to catch the Switch 2 hype train and ride it to the moon, baby. Ride it to the moon together. Take this thing as far as we could take it. Build and build and build and build this community up. Obviously, uh, you know, since that video I made a couple months ago, things have been better at my channel, right? You know, we had three months in a row where things were pretty bleak. Um, I committed to you guys through June of 2026, and then we had to make a decision then. And I'm still committed to you guys. But since then, my community has been incredible. We've been growing nonstop the last two months. Uh, we're actually getting scarily close to getting to 136,000 subscribers, which is crazy because we hit 135 like back in February. And now we're finally on the verge of, of crossing 136,000. Uh, views have been up. You know, we, we're, we're not at the views we want to be, but hey, we had 400, 450,000 views last month. Uh, that's incredible. Obviously, revenue, big fan support on, on all our live streams. You guys have been absolutely insane. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where the money's coming from, uh, but you guys are absolutely insane in our lives. You know, all the gifted members. We had something like 322 gifted members last month. What the hell is up with that? Right? You know, we, we, we obviously had all that super chats and, and some, a couple really, really crazy nights. But we also had a couple other nights that were really crazy. Last night, we had another, like, really interesting, crazy night. You guys are supporting the channel big time. And I thank you for that. Um, and it's not just the people giving the money. It's the views. The views are up. The likes are up. The subscriber count is up. Everything's up. Because you know what? Nintendo's heading in a direction I think we're all excited for. And whether or not Switch 2 is revealed this month or not, whether or not we have to wait all the way till March to finally see the thing, what matters is we know that Nintendo's in a good place. And as the rest of the industry around Nintendo seems to burn, seems to be on fire, seems to be panicking, oh no, we're, we're, we're going in debt, we're losing investors, we're closing studios. Nintendo just stands there and goes, yeah, we're ready. We'll be all right. We'll just go make another 100 million selling system and, you know, sell another 60 million copies of a new Mario Kart and make a few new IPs along the way and just have some fun. Because that's what gaming's really about in the end, right? Having fun. That's why I game. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.